There are two steps to retouching inside of Perfect Portrait. The first is by accessing the skin retouching pane on the right hand side of your screen, like the smoothing slider, the evenness slider, and many other options. On the left hand side of your screen, you can also use our manual retouching tools, the Perfect Eraser and the Retouch Brush for more stubborn blemishes. Let's start with the skin retouching pane on the right. You'll notice that some of the sliders have already been moved. These are the default settings that get automatically applied when you bring an image into portrait and you work with your facial selection. It's already started the blemish removal and the skin smoothing as well as something called the evenness slider. You'll also notice that face only has been checked. This means that the program is only looking for facial skin to make adjustments to. If you're working with an image where a woman is, for instance, wearing a strapless dress and you want to include her shoulders and her chest in the skin retouching pane, you can check face only off and it will go through and try and select some of the skin that may not necessarily be in the face area. We'll go ahead and leave that on for this image. Now let's start with the different sliders we can work with. The first is blemish removal. This goes in and acts a little bit like a concealer to help remove some of the pores and some of the smaller blemishes and softening them out. If we go ahead and take the blemish slider and move it over to the left, you'll notice that some of the bumps on her skin are a little bit more prominent. Now let's go ahead and pump that back up to around where the default was. Some of those blemishes just get a little bit softer and smoother and not quite as obvious. If there are still some that stand out, we can go in and manually retouch them later. Next is the smoothing slider. This adds a soft blur to the skin to smooth out some of those other elements. It starts out at 20. If the smoothing is a little too much, you can take that slider over to the left. This will give you a bit more of a natural portrait look. Or if you're working with someone who doesn't have the best skin, you can take that smoothing slider and really crank it over to the right. Be careful not to go too overboard with the smoothing slider. You want to make sure that your model still looks natural. Next is the shine slider. This helps reduce bright spots around the cheeks, the nose, and the forehead, which are typically the areas that get the largest amount of shine. If we take that slider and move it over to the right, you can pay attention to those bright spots on our subject's face, and they'll darken just a little bit to match the rest of the skin on her face. The shadow slider helps brighten up some of the darker spots on a face. In many cases, if you're using bright lights or natural lights, you won't need this quite as much, but if you're dealing with a subject who has very dark under eye circles or part of their face might be in shadow, you can take that shadow slider and move it over to the right and it'll help brighten up some of the areas that might be a little bit darker. This photo doesn't necessarily need it. The last slider, and definitely my favorite, is evenness. This evens out the color skin tone in your subject. By taking the evenness slider and moving it back over to the left to zero, you'll see that there are a couple of spots, particularly around our subject's cheeks, which I'm pointing out right here, that are a little reddish. If you're dealing with someone who has acne or has a lot of very blotchy red areas on their face, the evenness slider will help counteract that. By moving it over to the right, it's going to even out all of those skin tone colors and flatten them out just a little bit. Once you're done with the skin retouching pane on the right, you can move on to our manual retouching tools. We'll start on the left hand side by selecting the perfect eraser. This is our content aware fill tool and works great for more complicated removals. Let's start by using it to remove the nose ring on the left hand side of our subject's face. If you go up to the tool options bar, you can make adjustments to the size of the brush. We'll go ahead and open up that slider and make this just a little bit smaller. Once you're ready, just click and drag over the area that you want to remove and it'll go through and clean it up. Now the perfect eraser is great for more complicated spots, but when you want to just go in and remove tiny little blemishes like some of the small ones on her forehead, maybe the ones down here on her chin, you can use our retouch brush. Go over and select it on the left hand side. Up in the tool options bar, you can make adjustments to things like size, feathering, and opacity of this brush. And to use it, just click, and it'll go through and clean up some of those areas that might be not quite as even. 
I like to use the retouch brush on areas because it's a quick and easy tool and it's very fast. The perfect eraser is for much more complicated areas and can sometimes, by using that content aware fill option, take a little bit longer. The retouch brush is great for skin. It's soft and quick to use. Once you're done removing the excess blemishes, you can go ahead and move on to your color correction and your eye and mouth adjustments.